Okay, so right now we get to talk about air propagation. This is a really fun topic. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a way that we're going to be able to, you know, discuss how much uh, how much real air there is in uh, any uh, any observations that we have, any group of observations or whatever it may be. So as we talked earlier, all observations contain errors. So what that means is every computation we have also, you know, containing those observations also have errors. So any observation we have, you know, those are your direct observations, or any computations, which then means those are your indirect observations. So every observation, direct or indirect, has errors to it. So with error propagation, it's the process of evaluating errors and computations from observed and, you know, observed values that contain those errors. So we're just trying to evaluate it. Now remember that the error is not explicit, explicitly known because we don't know the true value, so so we're trying to, you know, through this, figure out, you know, what is the, the total random error that we can try and compute and figure out. All right, so the propagation of random errors utilizes the general law of uh, propagation, but this time it uses variances. So if you remember, we went back through and did the standard deviation and calculated that, and we figured out, okay, well, if we need uh, the variance, it's just the square of the standard deviation. Well, propagation uses the variances, so that's why we discussed it earlier in our previous uh, previous slides and lectures. All right, just to help keep you understanding the, the formula that we're getting to use here, okay? So let's say that we had A, B, C all the way up to N or would be equal to our observations that we have. All right, the, uh, the only constraint that we have inside using this and doing our propagation is that every observation is independent of one another, meaning they... They're not relying upon one another. It doesn't depend on uh, what happened over there at A first to be able to figure out what happens at B. Everything is strictly independent. So that's one constraint that we make sure that we always have to follow. All right, then uh, another part here. So these are the, the, uh, the notations that I will use. Is uh, You have sigma of A, sigma of B, sigma of C, sigma of all the way up to N number of observation uh, standard deviations. All right, then Z, Z is just a, uh, you know, whatever it is. It's some, some computation, whatever it is. But it's a function now of A, B, C, and whatever every observation that you have. So if you're trying to calculate the perimeter of something, you're going to have function of A, B, C, and D if it was a rectangle. All right, so to be able to calculate then the error of Z when it's a function of all those different observations, this is your general formula. Uh, if you're taking calculus, then you can know and learn how to take the partial derivatives of certain equations uh, and be able to use this. Um, if you haven't, then what I will do in this uh, presentation, I'll show you what the... Have, uh, haven't already taken the, the partials, I will show you what the formulas are um, so we can continue on to be able to allow yourself to be able to do the error propagation. But this, some, this is something you probably ought to, ought to know, ought to be familiar with, Eventually, when, when you get familiar with learning how to do this, this is the best way to figure out your total error. It's just by using this, and that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's say we had a sum of observations, meaning, uh, just like I'm saying, if you're going to take the perimeter of something. Okay, so let's say that there were, there were the three of them. Uh, so you had a triangle. You're taking the perimeters. You had observation A plus observation B plus observation of C. So to find out what the error of that sum is, this is your formula right there. Again, standard deviation squared. So you have the variance of A plus the variance of B, variance of C. Take the square root. That is equal to your total error. So let's take an example here. If A was equal to 753.81, B, I'll give you that, C right here, okay? Now I want to know what the, uh, what the total length is. So the total length is adding up the values there. And then uh, also we want to calculate what the total sum or total error is. So here, what I'm showing you right here, these are your standard deviations. I'm already giving them to you. So all we have to do is plug those values into the formula to be able to, to get it calculated. So that's how we be able to come up then with the total length. So if you add up those right there, say it's a perimeter, you add those up, you end up at 3055.16. And now if you put each one of these inside the formula up there, you end up then with 0 0.036, and it's plus or minus. And this then allows us then to compute the overall length with an overall error, including each one of those observations. 
All right, so now let's say we have a uh, satya of a sum. You're going to find that these are really, really similar. So uh, um, just keep in mind what uh, what we're dealing with here. So this one's error of a series. This means that where the standard deviation of every observation is the same. Okay, so uh, if you look at this formula right here, it looks exactly like what we just what we just saw in the error of a sum. The variance of a plus the variance of b plus the variance of c plus the variance of however many you're going to go on to. Well, being that if every standard deviation is the same, it's just a simplification of this formula to be able to do it for a series. If you get all the way down here, now you come out here and this is what you'll use. So if you see and recognize that the standard deviations are the same for every single one, then you can directly go to error of a series to be able to calculate this. So let's take an example again. So if A, B, and C, and you see that the standard deviations are the same for every single one, we want to figure out what the total length is. Again, error of a series, we're adding everything. All it is is a plus b plus c plus standard deviation times the square root of n, and n being the number of observations that we have. So you can see here that n is equal to 3. You have here is your, your lengths, and then each one of these, these are your standard deviations, which are all the same. So a is equal to b is equal to c. So to be able to calculate this now, it's 3055.16 plus or minus 0 0.021. And again, all you did was plug in the value of uh, standard deviation, and n was equal to 3. So that's how if, if the standard deviations were the same of everything. And what that means is that every, uh, every time you took an observation, since these are independent of one another, you had equal confidence of knowing that everything you did, if it was an angle, if it was a distance, whatever it was, the standard deviation was the, the same on every single setup and every time you did it. All right, so here's another example here. All right, let's assume that each of the interior angles of a four-sided polygon has an estimated error of three and a half seconds. Okay, we want to determine the sum of the random error for the sum of the interior angles. So we want the error, the total error, of this four-sided polygon. <clears throat> so what we know is then, four-sided, that means n is equal to four. We measured four angles inside of there. And every angle, what we're saying is, the standard deviation of each angle is plus or minus three and a half seconds. So are we dealing with a sum or are we dealing with a series? Well, we're dealing with both, but in this instance, we can, since every angle has the same standard deviation of plus or minus three and a half seconds, we can just use the formula for an error of a series. So your total error that you're going to find with inside here, then as you plug all the values inside there, take three and a half seconds times the square root of four, you end up at plus or minus seven seconds. So that is the total error you're going to have if you measure the inside of that uh, polygon. You measure the interior angles of there with all of them having the same standard deviation of three and a half seconds. So it's really not too bad. All right, so look at it a little bit differently now. All right, the error of a sum of interior angles of a four-sided polygon, it must be within 10 seconds. So before I gave you the standard deviation, this time I'm telling you that uh, the total error is 10 seconds. So we want to determine how precise we must measure the four angles inside to be able to ensure that our error won't exceed the 10 seconds. So now what we're looking for is we're looking for the standard deviation. So here's your formula. So now you plug in the information that you do know, and then you continue on, and then you'll be able to solve and figure out, well, the standard deviation then of each angle cannot exceed five seconds to ensure that the total error will not exceed 10 seconds. So it's just using the same formula. It's just determining, you know, figuring out what information is given you and where you can go with that. All right, now if we had a, uh, had a product, so we figured out the area of something, and we want to calculate that. Well, here's your formula for that. Straight, strictly, you're going to have... Uh, so here, A and B are your lengths, and then here you have the variance of B and the variance of A. Or the standard deviation of A and standard deviation of B, and both of those are squared. So here's your formula to be able to plug this information in. And you can see, you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, if, um, if you're looking at the, the overall length right here, A is going all the way over to this spot right here. And you look at your standard deviation, you can see that you have a little spot right inside here. This is the amount of error that sits inside there. If you look at B, this is the amount of error that can sit inside there. So you see that there's uh, this overall a area that you're calculating could fall anywhere inside here. You know, whether it's to this point or whether it's going to go all the way out to this point. So that's something now that we need to figure out and 
get into what we're looking at here. Okay, so now let's uh, let's take that and let's start applying it. So let me give you an example. So for this rectangle, A and B are with their 95% errors of A is equal to 605.08 plus or minus 0.072 and B is 252.46 plus or minus 0.053. Now make sure you understand the, the wording what I'm telling you right here. This is their 95% error. So the 0 0.072, this is, if you remember for the 95% error we talked about recently, so error 95 was equal to 1.9599 times the standard deviation. All right, so now what we're saying is, is 0 0.072 is equal to 1.9599 times the standard deviation. So you can calculate what the standard deviation is. So this isn't the standard deviation. This is the 95% error. So just keep in mind, whenever information like that is given you, you're paying attention to what it really is that you have. All right, so if we want to calculate the area um, of this uh, of this parcel and then calculate the, the estimated area. So to calculate the area, that's a pretty simple uh, uh, process. You take the two values and multiply them together. Now, if you remember significant digits, okay, here you have five, here you have five, so you must only end up then with five significant digits. The zero right here is not significant in this portion right here. Okay, so there's your area. So let's take now to be able to find out what the error is. Since we had the 95% uh, errors on, on everything, and we're going to use the 95% error because we're going to calculate the area at the 95% level. So if you plug in all the information that you have, right, the length of A times the variance of B plus the length of B squared plus uh, times the variance of A squared, or times the variance of A. Plug all that information straight in and look what you end up with. You end up with the uh, the, the error of that product of 36.9 feet squared. So then what's your total answer? 152, 760 feet squared plus or minus 36.9 feet squared. So that's the, that's the information that you'll give, that you will uh, provide for me.